Okay. One. So Two. How different is life crystals from Lil and other quack remedies that were perpetrated in the 1970s in Mexico and El Paso? I'll wait your answer. Okay, okay for Doctor. one, for one, uh, I just came back from Europe and I was on television four times in Europe in a little bit bigger countries than Antigua. Okay. Now, I've been, <laughs> I've been invited by many governments and I, I'm touring the world. Now, I've been speaking at the Consumer Affair in Toronto, Canada, in the Civic Center twice in April 92 and April 4th of this year. I spoke to 1,200 people there. I spoke to the, uh, the Pasadena, to the cancer conference two years ago. I'm scheduled to Wembley to speak on December 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th on the symposium. I've been invited to uh, Sydney, Australia in April 4th, 1974. I will be speaking there too. I will speak again in Canada to 3,000 people in March 26, 1994. See, I am going around the world and announcing it in every country, and I am organizing uh, this project through every country and giving this project into the hands of the people of each country and not to the hands of the multinationals. And I think this God gift belongs to the hands of the people and should be given to individual countries or groups of countries to control it, to produce it, and make it available to the people. Now, if anyone who is really interested in science, then they can follow up and they can read up on the current magazines and, the, and, the, and the, the current symposium, which is presented to the world. And I'm really very much surprised if those professionals who come in with this kind of questions, they didn't have the time to read the up-to-date reports from this symposium, which is presented worldwide. And with that, we'll go to the telephone again. Piggots, good evening. Yes, Thank um, you. good night. Um, just last night in CBS News, 60 Minutes, we, we, they had a program that looked at alternative medicine, and they were talking about the cartilage of shark being used for the treatment of cancer and so forth. And it was, you know, quite investigative and that kind of stuff. Had no mention of the discoveries that my good friend is talking about. And I'm a little bit startled and surprised that um, when, when they looked at such a thing, if his stuff was so good, well renowned all over the world, even a little footnote, a little message, something would have indicated that there's, there are other treatments for cancer and so forth, and it said nothing of the sort. So I don't, I don't trust what is happening here. I don't have too much confidence in him. And um, if these guys looked at the program last night, I'd like to hear what they have to say in response to that. And, and also, what they think about um, shark cartilage in the use of treatment in cancer. And Dr. Muller should know this because um, they did some studies in Cuba and they, they, they took the test back to the United States where they had this, the, the, the best doctors to investigate the reports and so forth and so forth. So let me hear what they have to say. Yes, but I must say that because you didn't see it or hear it on CBS does not um, negate. Um, let me, uh, uh, in, in response to your question, Madam, um, I, I'm pretty sure that if this discovery was, was well known all over the world, we would have heard about it long before Mr. Emmanuel came back to Antigua with this gentleman. I mean, I, I read wide, I listen to the news, I'm involved, I know what is happening, and nobody except Mr. Emmanuel has ever heard about this man before he came. I mean, don't take us a bunch of fools, we're a little bit more intelligent. Well, I must say, I, he I had heard of him before oh, he well, came. <laughs> Dr. Merkel, but, um, uh, uh, it's, it's up to, to me that? to decide which television show is going to air it, because I'm not interested to go to CBS, I'm not interested to, the, to go to Discovery, and I'm not interested to go to controlled media. I will pick my own media because I have turned down uh, media like CBS and, 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 uh, and like uh, uh, Noel in a uh, radio station in New York already two years ago. And I'm going to go to call the shots because this is my discovery and I am putting this information through the grassroots organizations. 
and I'm not interested in, um, uh, in, in the big television program because I do not have an ego. I do this for benefit of mankind. I've been retired very comfortable in 1985, and I came out from retirement, and then I just completed building a $3 million plant, which is federally approved in the United States. And I'm producing the oral supplement, uh, which we legally produce and distributing it. We, we distribute at 50,000 quarts of uh, the oral life crystal, and we did not have one single negative. We have no advertisement. We have no brochure. But people telling to each, each other how good is the material, and they putting the claim on it, and they buying the material. Dr. The, Mueller, you'd like to come in The only thing I wish to, to add here is that um, Obviously, those persons who are speaking are speaking from a position in which they have not seen the manual, they have not seen the film, they have not read the testimonials, and therefore they have absolutely nothing to, to back up what they're saying. I think that I did not just enter into this. I mean, I'm a professional and I function like one. Absolutely. Right? And um, any, I would not just take up any fly-by-night document and read it and, and, and go through. I have pictures here showing persons who had um, gangrene and the sort of things and getting life crystal treatment and the circulation being restored. All of it is, uh, all of it is right here. I mean, I, I'm not looking at any particular sort of mileage out of it. I'm not thing, but I feel that the, 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 the arguments on the basis of this scientific work is quite strong. It is true that many people may say that I'm, I'm, no, I'm no scientist. But then it all depends on the angle that they're looking at it from. Because if you're looking at it from the angle of objectivity, I may admit that I'm more scientific than many who think that they are scientists. I think if a document comes out, the, the idea is, let me see it. Let me read it. Let, let me find out what it is. Let's go through it. Let's dissect it. Let, let's get points out of it and therefore look at some of the claims that are being made. I think when people make certain types of claims, put their address, put their telephone number, put their fax number, it has a certain amount of authenticity. All right? And this is what I'm contending. I'm not contending whether or not it will cure all the diseases and so on. I'm saying that something has come up. Some person has a particular type of discovery, and um, the person has a protocol, the person has a sort of way in presenting it. You, you see it, you hear people's um, acclamation in relation to it, and therefore you have to, to, to take it and, and go through it. I would be willing, because I have the, <clears throat> the manual, I have the, the testimonials, I would be willing to give it to any scientific-minded person. Let them thrash it out. That's, what, that's why we're bringing this kind of program. And you know, it's in order to, to have people not just stay in your little corner and say, all right, it didn't come over CNN. Because obviously what we are saying is that once it didn't come over CNN, it's good. Precisely. And, and if, in fact, if it doesn't come over CNN, it negates its authenticity. It's not good. No, no, no. That, 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 that is poor measurement of, of standard. Suppose they don't want to carry. Yes. I mean, suppose they don't want to carry. And that's another matter. Okay. Uh, on that note, let us go back to the telephone line and invite Bellevue Estate onto feedback. Thank you very much, and a good night, and a very, very good program. Um, very good for the point of view, I think, of exposing certain attitudes among the Antiguan population, particularly as regards health and the medical establishment. I would like to just react to a caller from Bolands initially and other callers subsequently and support your excellent panel in some of the views that they're putting out. Not trying to support, namely, the rightness, wrongness, or efficacy of hypochondria or the elixirs of youth, but merely to support the proposition of new knowledge, new discoveries, and new inventions. And to ask Antigua as a whole, and those callers particularly, and specifically have been calling in previously, particularly the one from Bolands, why are Antiguans, one, so afraid of new knowledge? Can't they ask questions for themselves of this new knowledge that they're hearing? And shouldn't they listen to what the man is saying and try to dissect it analytically and ask the questions thereby? That's one question. Why, secondly, are they so as Dr. Muller is saying, caught up with the CBS thing. So the moment it comes over CBS, it's good, it's right, 
and that there's no questioning from it after it comes over BBC, which some people call BB blind, or the, C or the CBS, CNN situation. I think this is very, 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 what, almost an illiterate attitude for some of these callers to be taken. I would like to ask something further to of this medical association, which callers not only on this program, but on a previous program today on another media, were also alluding to this medical association of Antigua and the fact that they should be checked before Dr. Merkel, Dr. Mulwall, Mr. Emmanuel can go up on the feedback or on talk to me to expound some new discovery. This medical association in Antigua exists in name only. They have never reacted to any new knowledge that has come out. They never react to any advances in medicine that have come out. They never react to, say, the naturopaths or the homeopathic type of medicine and alternative strategies to health care and to, to medical things. In fact, the only time that this medical association of Antigua reacts is when their livelihood is threatened, when some other doctors are coming in, or when the question of their practicing private practice and still working in the hospital, when those type of questions is raised, that is when they react. For example, I would like to point out here that in reaction to, I think Mr. Emmanuel had brought up something about or against the use of cow's milk, for example, earlier up. And the reaction that I heard from people of the medical association, medical practitioners here in Antigua, on feedback on similar programs was, may I drink milk from since my barn? My grandmother give me milk from since my barn. I'm asking, is that a scientific reaction? And is this the sort of reaction that we're looking for? from the medical association uh, about uh, Dr. Merkel's discovery. Okay. I'm suggesting that they're not scientific at all and they cannot react to this because they've never shown us anything of that sort. And as regards this FDA, this Federal Drug Administration is not the be-all and end-all of medical, of, of, of medical knowledge. And it is not you, the ultimate thank authority. Thank you for your observation. They react, they, they're made up of people just like anybody else. They're riddled with politics. They are the people that react and will quickly jump when the big drug companies give them money, when they're getting finance from these, these sort of people. So the FDA's stamp of approval is not the stamp of approval that we're going to give to Dr. Merkel and wait for, for Dr. Merkel's discovery. No, the stamp of approval has to be our own intellect and our own question and critical analysis of what he's presenting, right, wrong, or indifferent. Thank you very much. Do you have a question? For Dr. Merkel? Okay. Well, he's gone. Um, Dr. Merkel, your response to that, because, you know, there has been a lot said there, and yes, I'm sure that uh, there's something you want to respond to. Yes, it's made a lot of sense, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, uh, I wouldn't have been invited into Wimbley to speak if they uh, would if the if this discovery wouldn't be real and wouldn't be the discovery of the century i'm the i'm i'm invited to speak by major countries all over the world and these are major organizations not only that but the latest report we just got from mexico city from the military hospital which you know you can't see just a little doctor around the corner when the patients with liver cancer uh was terminal had six months to live they started treating him in september 1992 and by May 1993 he was free of cancer and that's right here on the report from the military hospital in Mexico City and this is going on worldwide in many countries okay and on that note we'll take a short break and we'll be back with more of your calls do remember to call us on 462-0821 On the telephone, we have Martin's Village. Martin's Village, good evening. Hello, good night. Hello. Hello? Yes, your question, please. We can hear you. Hello? Hello, yes. We can hear you. Your, questions, your question, please. Hello? Yes, Martin's Village, go ahead. Okay, we seem to have a problem there okay, right now. Um, what I would like to say is that I have a friend who is a Canadian that was living here in Antigua, and he went back to Canada because uh, he, one of his son was, uh, he could not have walked. So because of this same uh, discovery, um, he had to go back. They sent to call them back so that they could probably give the treatment to the child if the child would be able to walk. And he wrote and told me that um, the... It, it will work, but it will take over 12 years before the child can really walk or think so. So what I would like to find out is how long, um, if somebody 
has sugar or heart problem or anything of the sort and they start taking this kind of treatment how long would it take before the person could really get positive results thank you okay excellent uh, perhaps, perhaps before that they should ask him which discovery which treatment is he talking about are you still there but, uh, no, no, he, he, oh, he's, he's gone. Can't be the same. But perhaps before, would you like to go into that before? Um... Oh, okay, yes, certainly. Um, we have here from the Department of Health and Human Services in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration, the address here is Milwaukee Resident Post, 517 East Wisconsin Avenue, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And the telephone number and all that. It's dated June 12, 1992. And it says the drug Chondriana to be used for treatment of breast cancer appears to meet all the criteria outlined in the attached FDA policy statement on personal importation of an unapproved drug. This means that the FDA has and will continue to allow you to import a personal supply of this drug as long as these requirements are met. I hope this assists you in securing the medical treatment appropriate for your case. If you or your doctor have any questions, call the person at the telephone number. Sincerely, Steve Davis, Public Affairs Specialist, Food and Drug Administration, Department of Health and Human Services. Um, this is just um, one of the um, permissions, I should say, granted by the FDA to um, Dr. Merkel to, to, to use his um, discoveries in the United States. It's one of many. Yeah. One of many, we understand, yes. yes. Okay, Dr. Merkel, back to the, the, the caller's question about how long it well, takes... Well, basically, if you look at the reports, the clinical data, which indicates that a five-week treatment of a half a cc purified life crystal injected twice a week to a man who has circulatory problem and claudication cannot walk in five weeks recovers to normal and goes jogging. Not only that, but his blood pressure becomes normal as well, and on top of it, his gray hair turns to dark. It says it says in the report. There's another case is a social security cases uh, where the woman was. Uh, uh, scheduled for kidney transplant and the same woman in five week time the kidney function normally and again uh, the blood pressure becomes normal and everything is recovering so uh, most of these adult onset diabetics it takes about five weeks to restore the circulatory problem now we have the very similar reports on, uh, on, on stroke victims and, and uh, people with uh, plugged arteries now, uh, the, uh, the oral supplement, which, uh, which does not have to be administered intravenously, simply sublingually, and that does not come under the, uh, the jurisdiction of the medical associations. People can buy it and drink it, and in one year time we'll clean up the artery, but it's progressive, so it starts right away. The, uh, the life crystal will dissolve the uh, cholesterol, uh, the urine turns cloudy and people urinating after fat and the blood vessel turns clean. It takes about six months to a year. And uh, once they are on the treatment, they're safe and they're protected from heart attacks. Let's go again to the telephone line and welcome Powell's on the feedback. Powell's, you're on. Yeah, good, good night. Good this night. This is which has cured many diseases. As Powell's, we can can't hear you. Could you speak a little louder, please? Yes, good evening. This Chondriana, which has cured so many diseases as AIDS and cancer. Is there a fixed price for this product, product and has this product has cured any AIDS or cancer patients in the Caribbean? Has the product cured any AIDS or cancer patients in the Caribbean? One. And the first part was, is there a fixed price for these products? Well, uh, I personally am not getting involved with the price because I teach the clinics how to make the product and they're distributing it. Now, the, uh, when AIDS patients are using the product, the response is 100%. Every AIDS patient who using the product, the uh, immune system being rebuilt. In four to five weeks, the T cells, the T4s will double, the lymphocytes will double, um, even the blood platelet comes up. Now, if the T cells stands at T4 cells at 20, it will go to 40. If it stands at 200, it will go to 400. But at the same time, they are also protected from the opportunistic diseases. We have a case in Mexico City, for example, again, a 43-year-old male who had double vision and lost his memory, and he was dying. He's back to work today. He's back on the street.
Um, could you elaborate a little more with respect to this AIDS situation uh, and the, the curing of this AIDS? Um, someone is on his or her deathbed, so to speak, and you or, or the, your, your, your um, discovery, Condriana, is administered. What happens? Well, uh, the, uh, when, the, when the chondriana is administered intravenously, uh, the chondriana genetic material get into some of the blood cells, and the blood cells will increase in size to four, four times the size and start producing the, the men's or the, or the person's own chondriana. Chondrianas are about 30 to 100 micron in size, and at that it takes exactly 60 minutes with every person. And then an immune reaction sets in. Uh, it's a uh, uh, chill, shake, temperature, just like catching a flu. Now, the, the chill and shake lasts 30 to 45 minutes. The temperature, 102, lasts about an hour or two. And uh, then a good sweating afterwards, and the whole reaction is over. This is a desirable immune reaction. Now, these chondrianas can produce military hardware of different type of uh, immune cells and macrophages to fight the disease. They also can produce produce any proteins including interferon and interleukin 2 and they're intelligent enough to pick up the frequency of the disease and custom design a military to attack and destroy the disease now if 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 they won't give me credit for anything but bringing back the cyanobacteria from three and a half billion years ago the world should take their head off because such an achievement beside of discovering of life crystal. Why everybody tries to ignore what's on videotape documented. Highly intelligent precursors are back giving birth to triplet on videotape so you can observe it. So those, those fossilized um, uh, cyanobacteria from three and a half billion years have been brought back to life because the miracle of life crystal. And I demand credit for that. Okay, we go back to the telephone and welcome Bender's Road. Bender's Road, Hello, good on the feedback. Hello. Go right ahead, Bender's Road. I do think that you might be able to hear me, although I am not hearing you at all. Yes, we are hearing you. Are, I would just like to use this opportunity to make, you know, about four very, very quick observations in relation to the program this evening. The first is that I must say that I am somewhat disappointed in both moderators when the caller from Clearhall launched into an attack, irrelevant, I might add, on the doctor on your panel. I do feel that the moderator should have stopped the irrelevant nature of the intervention and at the same time protected the panelist who would not have been able to make a defense himself in that matter at that time. Just an observation. Secondly, in relation to the information which is being presented here tonight, I do not know why it is called a new breakthrough, because anyone who is involved, even, you know, basically with science, any fifth form or sixth form student, will know of the principles and the effects, the uses and functions of DNA, mitochondria, chloroplast, energy transfers, electron transfers, and so on. Even the use of energy, ATP, adenosine, triphosphate, and others of that kind. What I do think is interesting in, in relation to what is being discussed this evening is the way in which this new information is being used. That is, several years ago when these substances were first discovered, I, no one ever saw them as medicines. The fact that they function, the inherent function in the cell can be used as medicinal therapy is indeed interesting. In relation to the difficulties which has arisen on the program in terms of the public's response to the information, it must be realized that what is important here in Antigua, in my view, is how information is marketed to the public, particularly information of this sort when we live in a community, and I hope one would not misconstrue this, which is not very, very well informed on basic scientific information. And once we realize that this is the case, Case, then more attention should be paid as to how information enters the public avenue. And my final point, with your permission, is that very recently, I think it is just two months ago, um, we saw the end of the World Congress on AIDS. Now, at this Congress, tremendous information was presented on this specific disease, AIDS. And my question is, after that bit of, you know, the comments that I've made is, why is it that we have not heard of any papers presented at the Congress 
in relation to um, chondriana or life crystals and their functions on AIDS. If scientific documentation exists to demonstrate the reality of this, then it would certainly, it certainly would have been an appropriate forum in which to present this information. I seek response only on the final point. Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you for that um, question and your comments, Scholar. Um, to reply from our point of view as moderators, yes, you are quite right. We should indeed have stopped that caller. But Dr. Muller had indicated off camera, and so probably you could not see, that he wished to take the question. And Dr. Merkel, perhaps you would like to... Um, yes, uh, as we are working with that. hundreds of clinics on worldwide, we're not concentrating only on AIDS. We're concentrating on all the lupuses, all the cancers, all the genetic diseases, the seizures, the epilepsies, and we have great success in all of this area. So when I speak, and I speak, I have two engagements a month. I can't go to every meeting. I was, uh, I was giving uh, lectures and seminars uh, in, in major conferences speaking to 1,200 people. So eventually, time will come when I will be able to go to an AIDS conference, but right now I have to present overall this to the world, and I'm only one man. I can only be on so many places at one time. And finally, Dr. Merkel, um, you have made this really amazing, life-saving discovery. Um, what does this mean, in, do you think, for the future of mankind? Well, basically, uh, I'm confident, uh, based on the initial clinical data, that uh, we, this world can be disease-free. The number one step to eradicate the major untreatable diseases, and the second is uh, to prevent such diseases. Now, I will be uh, giving a major disclosures and uh, new material in Wimbley when I will be there in December to uh, what, show... What is that? What, to what show it to the place? world. What will be taking place in Wimbley? In Wimbley, I will introduce the part three. There's four parts to this technology and only disclose two parts. Now, the third part uh, will be how to restore the, the primordial cell production in the human body or matter of fact, in the mammal body, and, and, and how to give back the immune system, what we used to have millions of years ago, that can protect us from all diseases once and for all. And one more step that to reversing aging is within our reach, because once we can mass produce primordial cells in situ within our system, we can differentiate them into organ cells, we can differentiate them into sex cells, or we can differentiate them into immune cells. And I will show such a spectacular series of photographs that will shock the world. I will show 500 pictures which we already have. It's putting together a new book which I will release and I would like to face I would like to see the faces of those skeptic scientists. And will you be able to reveal any of this to us tomorrow? I gather you're having a press conference at 9.30 a.m. Uh, I can reveal some of it verbally, but the book's not available because it's being put together now. It's going to be ready not only in book form, but also in video form, videotape form, where you can actually see the intelligence of our primordial cell, how they're communicating, uh, and, and um, uh, how they're differentiating into different type of organ cells or immune cells, and creating immune cells of four times the size of our cells. Like, we can have immune cells like 25, 30 micron size, and right now the blood cell is around 7 micron size. And I gather there will be a symposium tomorrow evening, Mr. Emanuel. Yes. Where will that be and at what time? This will be at the Moravian Conference Center, and that's in uh, Cashew Hill, from 6.30 p.m. until. We have a film that we'll be showing, and I hope that... Oh, let me just make one thing clear. It is free to the public. Uh, it's tomorrow evening, and it's a pre we also have a press conference. We'll be having a press conference at 9.30 at the same place in Cashew Hill. Uh, the evening thing will be free 
also the press conference. Okay, wonderful. And on that note, we'll wrap up feedback for tonight. Um, thanks to all guests, Dr. George Merkel, the renowned nuclear physicist, who has discovered um, the elixir of youth. Um, life Crystals and Condriana, and Dr. Evans Muller, a general practitioner, also physician for the Life Crystals project in Antigua, and Mr. Teddy Manuel, holistic and scientific skincare specialist um, and director of the Life Crystals project in Antigua. Do join us again next week for another edition of Feedback, when I can tell you that um, with almost some degree of certainty that we will be having a discussion on disaster preparedness. So do join us then. From my co-host, Peter Gordon, and from me, Ivor Williams-David, it's good night. <laughs>